Swami Abhedananda's pre-monastic name was Kali Prasad Chandra. In narrating the incidents, we shall refer to him as Kali Prasad or Kali. Kali Prasad had studied Wilson's History of India and there he had learnt about Shankaracharya, the great exponent of Vedanta. Shankara's life and works inspired young Kali and thenceforth he cherished a desire to become a pandit and a philosopher like him. Kali took a drawing class in school and within a year he excelled. The teacher praised his skill and prophesied a bright future for him. But one day, Kali told the teacher that he would not come to the drawing class anymore because he had decided to become a philosopher. Kali's teacher tried to convince him that it was better to be a painter than a philosopher. But Kali replied, saying, No, sir, a painter studies the surface of things, but a philosopher goes below the surface and studies the causes of things. So, I want to be a philosopher. He was extremely inquisitive from his boyhood. To satisfy his hunger for knowledge, he would ask his father various questions that would surprise the wise English teacher. When he was 14, he found a copy of the Bhagavad Gita in his father's study and began reading it, but his father said it was too difficult for him. Kali took it away and started reading it in the dead of the night. He started exploring various other scriptures and was able to grasp their import in no time. The scriptures, however, did not quench Kali's thirst for knowledge, so he desperately searched for a spiritual teacher. In June 1884, Kali went to Dakshineshwar and met Sri Ramakrishna. When he entered Dakshineshwar, he found two people, Shashi and Ramlal, who took him inside his room. He said he felt tremendous peace and joy while entering his room. Ramlal gave him some luchis and sweets for refreshments and asked him to wait. He was waiting for Sri Ramakrishna who had gone out. When Sri Ramakrishna was arriving, his heart was beating hard. He said he stood there motionless. After getting down from the carriage, Sri Ramakrishna said, Kali, Kali, Kali and entered his room, repeating the name of the Divine Mother. He entered his room and bowed down to him. The Master asked about him and he said, I have a desire to learn yoga. Will you kindly teach me? The master kept quiet for a while and then said, It is a good sign that you have a desire to learn yoga at this young age. You were a yogi in your previous birth. A little was left for perfection. This will be your last birth. Yes, I shall teach you yoga. Rest tonight and come to me again tomorrow morning. The next morning, Ramlal told Kali that the master was waiting to see him. Entering his room, Kali bowed down to him. He then asked him what he was studying. In his own words, he said, I am now in the entrance class. Very good, said Sri Ramakrishna. Then, he took Kali to the northern veranda. He asked him to sit on a cot. When he was seated in a lotus posture, the master asked him to stick out his tongue. As soon as he did that, he wrote a mantram on it with the middle finger of his right hand and advised him to meditate on Kali, the Divine Mother. He did exactly what he was told to do. Gradually, he lost outer consciousness and sat in deep meditation. He says, I felt an unspeakable joy within. I don't know how long I stayed in that condition. After some time, the master touched my chest 
and brought me back to outer consciousness. He then asked me what had happened and I told him about my blissful experience during meditation. He was very pleased and afterwards the master instructed me on certain ideas of meditation. The master told me to meditate every morning and night and to report to him all my visions and spiritual experiences. Then the master asked me to go to the Kali temple and meditate there. When I returned from the temple, the master gave me prasad and asked me to visit him again. Kali began to practice spiritual disciplines under the master's guidance. And through his grace, he was blessed with many wonderful visions of gods and goddesses. One day, while meditating at home, Kali saw various gods and goddesses and divine incarnations, Krishna, Chaitanya and others, and they all merged one by one into the luminous form of Sri Ramakrishna. He ran hastened to Dakshineshwar and narrated this experience to the Master. To this, Sri Ramakrishna, after hearing, said, Ah, you have seen Vaikuntha, the abode of Vishnu. Henceforth, you will no longer have these visions. You have risen to the formless state. This proved to be true. From then on, during meditation, Kali's mind was absorbed in the infinite, the vastness of the impersonal Brahman rather than divine forms. After this vision, Kali was fully convinced that the master was an avatar, as he later wrote in a Sanskrit hymn to Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna trained each disciple separately. As Sri Ramakrishna did not teach through books or through any set curriculum, it is important to learn from each disciple how he was trained. Kali was trained in one such unique method. This teaching method in Abhedananda's own words, he said, Ramakrishna used to teach us to chant Hari Bol, Hari Bol loudly while clapping our hands. When somebody asked him the reason for clapping one's hands, he said, As the birds of the tree fly away when one claps one's hands loudly, so the sinful thoughts of the mind go away when one chants God's name while clapping one's hands. Every evening in Dakshineshwar, the master would sit on his bed facing the north and repeat, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, while clapping his hands. Sometimes he would repeat, Hari is my Guru, my Guru is Hari. O Krishna, O Krishna, O Govinda, you are my life and soul. Not I, not I, but thou, but thou. I am an instrument, you are the operator. This is his method with which he used to teach us. Then, repeating these words, he would go into ecstasy. In that state, he would importune Mother Kali with his words, but we would not be able to understand it. Watching his God-intoxicated state, we were amazed. We felt that the Master was in communion with the Divine Mother and that he was talking to her and the Mother was answering his questions. We realized that Sri Ramakrishna was not a human being, he was God. Sri Ramakrishna taught us to practice japam and meditation every morning and evening. About meditation, he sometimes referred to his Guru Totapuri's illustration by telling us that Tota used to say that if a brass water pot is not cleansed every day, stains accumulate on it. Likewise, if the mind is not cleansed by meditation every day, impurities accumulate in it. Sometimes, while teaching us, the master would tell us about his own sadhana. To us one day, he said, When I meditated, I became like a motionless stone image. 
Sometimes birds sat on my head, but I could not feel them. In fact, during deep meditation, when the mind becomes still and motionless, one does not notice if flies or mosquitoes sit on the body. The master used to say that this is a sign of a concentrated mind. <laughs>